All right, guys, welcome back to another Chem Complete episode where we are going to be solving another unknown structure using spectroscopy. So we'll go about this using our regular methods of degrees of unsaturation, mass spec, IR, and then the NMR data. And just as a brief reminder, if you head over to chemcomplete.com and you go under buy guides, we do have the spectroscopy guide available and we have lots of other guides available there as well. So if you appreciate all the content we put out, that's a way you can support the channel and it will also benefit you because you'll have access to additional uh, offline practice problems as well as an entire walkthrough guide on how to solve these types of problems. So go ahead and check out what we've got over at the website. So to start off, we want to go ahead and solve our degrees of unsaturation. So we have a relatively simplistic structure here. It's C3H6O2. Now, the degrees of unsaturation, we're going to do 2 times the number of carbons, which is 3, plus 2, and then subtract the number of hydrogens because we ignore the oxygen. So that would be 6, and then all of that would be divided by 2. So if you put that together, that's 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 minus 6 is 2 divided by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is going to equal 1 degree of unsaturation. So we really only have one of two choices here. We either have one ring or we have a double bond. And when we think about it, a double bond is probably going to be most likely. And I say that because if we take a look here, we only have three carbons. So the chance of a three carbon ring, uh, they're usually not very stable. Now you could potentially have a hetero ring where you have oxygens involved. So we could have up to a five membered ring, theoretically. Uh, but more than likely we have a double bond and that'll be confirmed shortly uh, if we continue our analysis. So one degree of unsaturation, then we move on to the mass spec. Now for the mass spec, the M plus peak here is at 74. So we know that the mass of this structure is 74 grams per mole and we would confirm that with the molecular formula that was given and then if we take a look there's two other important or prominent peaks that are being pointed out in the mass spec here and one of those is at 45. Now if you take a look in the guide that I have a peak at 45 is usually going to signify a carboxylic acid group, so a C double bond O, OH. That's a common fragment if you check your appendix for the mass spec in that guide. All right, now that would be suggesting that we could have a carbonyl, and that would account for the degree of unsaturation. We do have two oxygens, so this is possible as a functionality right now. So then we also take a look, we have a peak at 57. So the peak at 57, there's a couple of things that 57 could be, but one of the most common is an ethyl ketone of sorts. So it's a CH3, CH2, C double bond O fragment that hits the mass spec detector. And this is certainly possible because what we could do if we're saying we have a carboxylic acid and then we also have an ethyl ketone portionality, we could just finish this off as a carboxylic acid here. Now, just from the mass spec alone, and this suggestive evidence, this already matches the formula down here. We have three carbons, right, the ethyl and the carbonyl. We have six hydrogens, five of which are accounted for in the ethyl, and then one hydrogen over here in the carboxylic group. And then we have the two oxygens involved in the carboxylic acid. So this is potentially the structure we're going to be dealing with but we want to confirm it with the other spectroscopy and that's always a good habit so um, if you come across these problems you're being given problems like this by a professor you may get to a point where you think you've solved it but you want to go through they give you all the specs for a reason and you want to go through and support your claim with each individual spec, even though you may have already solved it with the mass spec. Um, usually the more complicated the molecule, the more you need to rely on the NMRs. Okay, so if we take a look at the IR up here, we have two major peaks. Now the first one ranges from 3,500 to 2,500. It's broad, but it's also got some jagged portionality to it right here. Now this, if you look at your IR tables, is very, very distinct of the OH vibration in a carboxylic acid. So you have two types of OH vibrations. You have the alcohol, 
And when you just have an alcohol functionality, you get the broadness, but you don't get the stretch over that region and the jagged portions that come on it. It's just a very smooth dip that's very wide. When you get the carboxylic acid portionality, you really see more of this sort of half smooth but half jagged formula, and it goes over almost a thousand wave numbers, which is exactly what we see here, all right? And then 1715, this is right on track for the carbonyl, which would be confirming it. So this uh, setup right here is going to further confirm what we were predicting with the mass spec. So let's go ahead and see what the carbon 13s have to offer in terms of uh, any suggestive evidence. So we have the C13 here. Now we have the depth and we have the proton decoupled or your regular carbon 13 NMR. Now what we see if we take a look at the regular we ignore the solvent and we see one two three peaks. Now the third one is way downfield here. It's uh, around 180 or thereabouts. Okay. So if I take a look at this, there's three peaks in the carbon-13 NMR. That means all three carbons, because remember the mass spec said that we had three carbons, all three are unique. Now that, again, makes sense if we take a look at the ethanoic acid we're proposing. Uh, every single carbon in there is unique. There's no symmetry in that molecule. Okay, so what we can confirm here is the peak that we're going to see around, I'm going to call that 8 ppm. The peak at 8 ppm is almost certainly going to be a methyl. Anytime you see something less than, I'm going to say about 20 ppm on a carbon-13, you're dealing with methyl groups, CH3 groups. Now, when we take a look at what we have here, it's uh, roughly 26 ppm, the second peak. If you go up and you take a look at the depth NMR, you can see the inversion right here. Now, CH2 groups show up inverted. Methylene groups show up inverted on a depth. So that confirms that this is absolutely a CH2 right here. So we have the making for the uh, ethane part of the ethanoic acid. And then if we come up here, this should be our carbonyl because we definitely have a carbonyl based on IR evidence. And sure enough, uh, anything north of about 160, 165 is going to be carbonyl. And a carboxylic acid is going to hang out right around 180, 185. And sure enough, this looks like it's just a hair over 180. So maybe we'll call that 181 ppm, a okay, pretty far down field. And this is confirmation of a carbonyl group, most likely a carboxylic acid. So the final um, push for the carboxylic acid and confirmation will come from the proton NMR because a carboxylic acid will have that acidic proton that is very easily seen on the proton NMR. So let's take a look at the proton NMR. So for the proton NMR, we can see three peaks here. The first one is going to be this one right here that integrates to three. That would be our CH3 group. And that makes sense based on the PPM. So this might be, let's say, about a 1.2 PPM. It is integrating to 3, implying that it would be a CH3. And then if you take a look here, this is a triplet. So if it's a triplet, it means its neighbor must have two protons. So that suggests it's a CH3, right? The integration means 3. And the triplet means that it's next to a neighbor with N plus 1 protons. So 2 plus 1 is 3, making the triplet. And that is CH2. As with all these videos, if you're lost in terms of what I'm talking about, check the description below and I will leave a link to the playlist. I have an entire guide, free online um, course on YouTube in terms of breaking down how to solve these uh, spec by spec. So we have one for mass spec, for IR, for NMR. And if you're confused at any point, just go ahead and uh, check out some of those lessons. So the CH2 then should be confirmed by this additional peak right here, right? And the CH2, it integrates to two, so that's good. And we see that there's a quartet down there. So a quartet means you have a neighbor with three protons and a CH3 has three protons. So this is right on track. This is exactly what we would expect from uh, an ethyl group. Now, you can see that this uh, CH2, the methylene, 
is much further downfield than regular CH2s would be. So a lot of times CH2s are going to show up maybe somewhere between 1.2 to 1.4, 1.5. This one is showing up at approximately 2.4. So in order to get a push that far, you have to be next to an electron withdrawing group to get that sort of de-shielding effect that pushes it downfield. And 2.4 is right around where carbonyl would show the de-shielding effect. So that's exactly what we would expect. Now, can we confirm the carboxylic acid? And we can, if we come over here, we see that we have something that exchanges with D2O around 11 ppm. So this is, we'll just slightly over about 11.1 .1 ppm. Now, anytime you see something that says exchanges with D2O, it means it has protons that are readily removable. So you're talking about carboxylic acids, alcohols, amines, things of that nature. This right here at 11 to 12 ppm, that is where a carboxylic acid proton will always show up. That's the only thing that usually shows up in that region. So this confirms with an integration of one and a spec that is this far or a signal that is this far downfield. This is absolutely a carboxylic acid. And we can put all of this together with this evidence to confirm that we have ethanoic acid, CH3, CH2. We only have our one degree of unsaturation for the carboxylic acid group, and that brings this to a close. So hopefully everybody found this useful. Remember, there's an entire playlist of these, so if you're cramming for a test, if you're getting ready, if you're going through this in class and you just don't understand it, there is hours worth of this material at this point. And when I say hours worth of material, I'm talking about just solving these types of specs. This is, I think, the eighth one that I've done. So go ahead and check it out. I have more that I'll be uploading shortly. And again, check out that course and head over to chemcomplete.com to show your support. If you're able to, the guide is only a couple bucks and you'll have a perfect walkthrough anytime you're trying to solve these. So until next time, I will see you guys later. Thanks for your support. And as always, remember to subscribe and like.